So talk to me um, about um, your work on the film. Like, how'd you get involved? So I was in the middle of the pandemic. Honestly, I think the shutdown happened, and I was shooting a TV show, Home Before Dark, uh, in Vancouver that I was the showrunner of, and I remember my brother was living in London, and he was like, girl, buckle up. It's about to get crazy. And so I was like, oh, my God, they say they're going to shut down the world. And no one believed me. Everyone thought I was crazy. And they shut down the world. And so I was in my house, and I'm a real sort of survivor. You know, I was like, pivot. I was like, friends. I was like, pivot. So I just pivoted, and I was like, I'm going to write another movie now. Mostly I work in movies, and I, you know, I had been doing TV. And so I was like, I'm going to do another movie. And I spoke to my dear friend, Liza Chazen, who's the greatest producer of all time. And she called me, and she said, I have this. Sandy Bullock movie. It's about, and I was like, shh, I don't care what it's about. I was like, I love Sandy Bullock so much. I was like, I don't even care what it's about. Just call me. So I got on the phone with Sandy, and she talked to me about her vision for the movie. And there were some really great scripts before me. And, you know, she just sort of said, what I'm thinking is this, and what I want to try is that. And so we just really dug in together. And it was such a joy to be working with her, especially during that time, which was really scary and dark and weird. And, um, you know, she's really brilliant, and she knows what she's good at. And and so to get a chance to work with her, it made me feel like my life was so expansive in a time when I was really trapped inside this tiny little house in this tiny little room. Um, so it kind of saved me. And then we just had fun and we laughed and um, we had an amazing time. And I just tried to kind of like hone the tone of the movie because the tone of the movie is very specific. Um, and it knows that it harkens back to these older movies like Romancing the Stone, but it's also making fun of itself the whole time. So the, the difficulty was about figuring out how to keep that tone without ever jumping the shark. You didn't want to be so ridiculous that people got off the ride. You wanted to feel grounded and real, but you wanted to make people laugh and be completely ridiculous. So we were just so lucky to find the Knee Brothers, who did an extraordinary job with that tone and with the movie itself. And they are like brothers from another mother for me. We we work together, and I just adore them and want to work with them forever. So it's been a real delight. Yeah, I was going to say, just looking at the trailer, like it looks like it has everything, like you're saying, everything. Like It's adventure, it's comedy, there's like a little bit of romance, there's like... Yeah, and the scary part is you're trying to sort of please so many different things, and the worry is that you're going to do it and end up pleasing nobody, right? Because the action's not going to be action-y enough, and the romance isn't going to be romantic enough. And the, you know, so you worry about that, but really we just tried to be very true to what the movie wanted to be and what it was sort of telling us it wanted to be. Um, so hopefully people will love it and it will transport them out of their lives for a few minutes. Yeah, and so, I mean, now you're here at South By, it's going to premiere in front of, like, a live audience, you know, after all know, that you've been so through excited. with this, like you said, yeah. <laughs> like, talking about, besides excited, like, how else do you feel about it? You know, it's funny. I actually got weirdly emotional. You know, we, we tested the movie, and the way that you have to do it right now during COVID is you sort of, like, are watching people on a TV screen with, like, a night vision goggle, and you're staring, and you're like, the lady in the front row got up. Do you think she's leaving? Oh, no, she's just going to the bathroom. Oh, look, now she's having fun again. Oh, she's eating popcorn. She took her mask off. I'm scared, you know? So it was the weirdest experience to watch people watch it. But what happened was, you know, I think we're all looking for joy right now. It's really hard to access it. There's a lot of serious stuff going on in the world. My heart breaks for the Ukraine, the kind of ways that people are trying to take away women's rights, gay people's rights. There's a lot going on right now that's really sad. And for me personally, watching people laugh so hard that they were like slapping their knees and crying and having the best time, it was really emotional for me. It really made me feel like, oh God, I don't, I'm not wasting my life. I'm doing something for a reason. I'm doing something to make people happy. And like, that's in short supply these days. So I feel lucky to be able to have done that. I totally agree with you. I mean, I think there's just not enough of that. And I'm so happy to hear that that's going to be something from this movie. Uh, well, I hope you love it. And thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Donnie.